and they just no. press pause at the top. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't yeah. <laughs> Got it. Uh, tina koto, tina koto, tina tato katoa, and welcome to the Paikakariki Community Board meeting for the 9th of August 2022. Uh, Sophie, could I ask you to open us with a karakia, please? Sure. Um, and apologies, we have an apology from uh, community board member Jess Hortop, who is unwell today. Uh, and I noticed that Dan O'Connell, uh, the fellow board member, uh, may be late joining. I haven't received formal apologies from him. Uh, any declarations of interest relating to items on the agenda? No. no. Noted. And I don't think we have any public speakers here, unless Rosie, you're going to, I noticed that, that, that you're there behind your screensaver, <laughs> um, but I imagine that you're going to be speaking something about the seawall or are you in public speaking? Um, thanks, Holly. Thank you. Um, no, I'm I'm actually here as a um, sort of fly on the wall because I understood ah. Paul was going to be um, giving a report. I understood that. Yep. So he yeah. might be. There. And and I did think that Tim might be coming as well, but I I don't know. Um, okay. But anyway, um, because Paul and I have been working closely on the on the seawall. Okay. So, yep. um, Thank you. I'm just a listener today. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Uh, so Holly, Dan's not able to make it. Okay, so apologies from Dan O'Connell. Um, and members business. Um, we've got any leaves, no leaves of absence that I'm aware of. Um, not from me, for you, Tina. No. And Sophie, no. Um, and matters of an urgent nature. Um, we don't have anything, do we? Janice is no longer coming, so that will be deferred until the next meeting. And community board members' activities. I would just like to note that um, publicly that the community board um, ha now has a localism fund uh, from council, which is um, a substantial yearly fund. Um, we are still working out the criteria and the framework of that fund. But by our next meeting, we will be allocating, we hope to be allocating a substantial portion of that fund. Um, and we will be going into the, out to the community and putting some comms out around what our criteria is. Um, and we look forward to that. So um, also big mihi to council for um, supporting community boards in this way. As a community board, we did ask for this. Um, it's there to also support community boards to do a, a um, to do a, a better and more robust job as well as community. So um, big mahi to council for listening. Um, it's noted and thanks. Anybody else want to have anything to add there on members business? No, other than just um, consulting with mana whenua on that and being involved in thinking about how that might work for us. I haven't been um, doing anything else for the last six weeks, which have flown by. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, I was in my bed for most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Pain yeah. has been under the weather with COVID. Um, okay. And Sophie, have you got anything that you'd like to add? Um, probably just a, a brief one around engaging with Nazi Homia and Ali Weber, uh, Ryan Nakimi and others around the Harakeke situation and yeah the parks team at council have been awesome and the contractors and kind of everyone coming to be a part of that corridor and learn how they can do things better so have been working kind of in with them on that specific one and still trying to get a little bit of movement on uh, cycle parking in the village so we're kind of waiting for Todd to come back from his extended holiday which I think is this month and also just waiting on uh, Glenn and his team to figure out what kind of budget, if any, there is within kind of current current budget for for this type of project. So originally he'd come back to me and said, there might not be any, oops, we might have kind of maybe should have given you a bit more caution when we said that we might be able to even just put in a few extra parks. But I think, yeah, surely we'll be able to find a workaround. So I'm still kind of working mm -hmm. at that um, and just, yeah, figuring out how we can 
how we can do that better and had a meeting with Janice Hill around some wayfinding stuff through the village for cyclists as well, but she's going to bring that paper yeah, to the next meeting, which is cool. And probably one other brief thing that's top of mind or while it's top of mind, um, so I didn't write anything down, so I'm just speaking about things I can remember, um, was that this month I was at the local government New Zealand conference as well in Palmerston North and some really interesting conversations there around yeah, democracy and the role of grassroots communities and the future for local government reform. So just a bit of a plug, I guess, for those of you who haven't connected into that into that review and what it might mean for local government more generally. It's a really important corridor and some quite exciting things potentially coming out of it. So yeah, cool. that was a cool conference, really energizing. Um, great. With a lot of young young elected members from across New Zealand. So yeah. Yeah, that's great. And I suppose um, um touching on that with um elected members business that that what we've I know that Tina and I, and I know that Sophie's been doing it too, has been, we've been talking a lot to people about uh, nominations and standing, which do close at 12 p.m., not 5 p.m., it's 12 p.m. Friday. So if anybody ends up watching this on the stream, it probably won't even be up on YouTube by then, but um, it would be, yeah, so we've been tapping quite a lot of shoulders, having a lot of conversations um, with people to, um, yeah, to, to hope that we get some really good candidates in Paikakariki to carry on the mahi. Um, and also would like to note um, that Sophie is freestanding um, in her current role as ward councillor, which um, I personally can say that I'm very happy about. So uh, actually you've done a Brilliant job um, with us, Sophie, coming in new to this, and um, you know you've only just started. So, um, so thank you, and thank you for um, for restanding. Um, and right, so moving on. Hi, hi, Natasha. I see that you're. I'm just saying hi and hi, Councillor um, Halliday. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we've got a few. Now we've got some presentations, haven't we, coming in. in. So for our reports, okay, if we just look at um, our funding applications, which is item uh, number 6.1, we have some, now Tina, we have some, uh, now in my last meeting, I was unwell, our last community board meeting, and there was a decision made to roll over some funding um, from the month prior into the new financial year. And that was a application from the Kapiti Marines, um, Marines Trust. Um, do you want to talk to this, Tina? Just to be clear, we didn't roll over funding. We rolled oh, over sorry. applications, yep. Sorry, yes, yep. No, correct. You can talk. I stand corrected. Um, so the application from the Kapiti Marines Trust, which was for $500, which, um, is for the opening, which had to be um, deferred due to COVID and weather, because it's been such a weather bomb recently. Um, but the um, their display now is is uh, is publicly available in Queen Elizabeth Park, and um, big ups to the Kapiti Marines Trust. It's a really beautiful piece of storytelling on the wall there, um, and it's a it's a beautiful object as well. Um, and it's really nice to have some narratives um, in our environmental spaces. Um, and another um, application was from the Paikakariki Station Trust, which was funding for the uh, Perkins exhibition um, that has been on at the truck at the um, at the railway station at the museum. And um, and nod to you there, Natasha, uh, for joining us there. Um, and Appendix 4, which was the Combined Lions Club of Kapiti funding application, which was again was for 500, and the Kapiti Community Patrol, which was for 500. Uh, sorry, the um, Lions one was less than 500, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it is actually. I think it's 250, 280 even. Um, I'm just trying to find I don't it. Have any recommendation um, things on my agenda this time around? I don't. It's just missing off the agenda, so I have to scroll through all the appendices. Two hundred and fifty. Okay. Two fifty. Okay, yep. so Lions Club of two fifty. Um, moving through, I would like to make a motion that uh, the Paikakariki Community Board endorses 
an application from the Kapiti Marines Trust and the Paikakariki Station Trust for $500. Um, do I have a seconder? I, I'll second that. Okay, carried. Um, and the Combined Lions Club of Kapiti, the Paikakariki Community Board endorses an uh, application for $250. Do I have a second? Yeah, I'm happy to second that. And for the Kapiti Community Patrol funding application, they have asked for 500, but using the same logic that we have used, um, it's for petrol costs for patrolling the village, but given that our village is small, um, it does, you know, you can walk from one end of it to the other, um, rather than the full 500, um, I, suggest that the community patrol um, also apply to other community boards for money. So there was nothing in the application form that told us that they had applied to any other community boards. So I would like to make the suggestion that they apply to other community boards and make the recommendation and make a motion that we, um, that the Paikakariki Community Board um, uh, give $250 to the Kapiti Community Patrol. Do I have a seconder? Happy to second that. Seconded by Councillor Hanford and carried. And I'll just get back to my, sorry, my agenda's a bit all over the place. Um, and page six, Holly. Page six, yeah, I just don't have the recommendations on the page, so I have to jump to the appendices. Um, now, updates, but I don't know, have we got... Who have we got for up? We've got an update on the Paikakariki seawall, but I don't see Paul, or am I just not being able to see him on my screen? Um, Here he is. Oh, coming. Just He's coming. coming. Yeah. Okay. We were advised that it might be around 7 30 that we'd get to this. So oh, okay. We're early. You've been okay. And I'm um, just while we wait for Paul, I would like to say um that we very gratefully received um a design brief from from Tim um, over Access Way 4, uh, and we are yet to convene as a group to discuss it, but, um, but I, am, I am absolutely thrilled uh, with how things are progressing on that angle as far as the, um, the art working group that um, he's convened, and the communication has been clear, um, it's been professional, and I'm really happy with um, the document that we received mm. yesterday. So um, big mihi to Tim uh, for his work in project managing the art uh, aspects of the sea wall. Yeah, I totally took all that. Mm, totally took all that as well. Beautiful. Um, Holly, I just see that we've got Darren Utting here um, to give mm -hmm. his update. So I okay. wonder whether you want to hear that while, while you wait yes. for Paul. Yep, that's fine. Yes, yep. Hi, Darren. Long time no see. <laughs> Hi, sorry, apologies for being late. So I just realised oh, I had that Te Reo class tonight. So I just ducked out from that. So um, yeah, just a quick update from us. I think the um, the main thing really is on the um, the Wainui uh, stream um, restoration project. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just wanted to update the, the, the um, community board. Um, we have lodged the consent with regional council um, about three weeks ago. Um, which is uh, which is a good milestone, um, and we just um, just need to do a little bit of work for the KCDC consent around uh, vehicle access. So we're just consulting with the um, with the council engineers on that, but really just to um, uh, just to let the, the board know and and Pakakariki residents um, the access uh, into that block. Um, I'm just trying to. Um, pull the plan up now, but it's the old Perkins block, and there's about because of the streams and the railway line and um, uh, you know the state highway, we we have about four or five different access points, and one of them is um, from Betty Perkins Lane off off Tilly, mm -hmm. off Tilly Road yep. by the Transpower yep. substation there, mm -hmm. um, and that's probably going to be our main one into that area and then across the stream to get into the. Um, the, the, the whole sort of restoration area. So there will be um, some truck movements, which we're just working on a, a circulation route. We'll, we're looking to, to sort of do a, a, 
almost a, a one-way circulation route um, and we'll need to just manage pedestrians uh, through that walkway area as well so um, it's very it's a very narrow entrance it is the way um, the council did the maintenance on the stream quite recently um, mm. and apparently there were quite a few movements in and out of that area um, at that time as well so um, so sorry Darren can I just on that um, uh, I just want to know whether you've been talking to um, the Tilly Road residents who are impacted severely and consistently by the flooding into their homes and properties uh, at the very north end of Tilly Road because they have an action group they've been speaking to multiple agencies and I think it's really important that they are around the table to know what's happening in their homes so um, and or on their properties and, and it's it's not a one-off, it's consistently. So we've still got one of the properties who's got a port loop because they cannot use their septic tank because it's inundated by water. And um, this has been going on for months and um, and they can't use a shower. So they have to go and shower anywhere else. So they, it, it's, I just want to know, are you talking to them? Um, we, we haven't talked to them yet. Um, Obviously, a key part of the scheme is to resolve the flooding issues down that uh, north end of Tilly Road. Um, so we really wanted to, you know, ensure that we had the the, the, the consent because it's part of the wider of a wider consent with with um, Transmission Gully uh, that we did get it received by Greater Wellington Regional Council and their flooding people are having a look at it now. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we're at a point now where I feel that um, you know it's been it's we've consulted with Iwi and it's been sent out to the various specialists and, and doc and things so I think we're at a place where we can um, feel a bit more comfortable that um, you know we are proceeding with the scheme it's been accepted by regional council and so we can we can start some of those those discussions um, mm -hmm. I think the the uh, um, you know, the Paul Hughes sort of environmental group that's been, you know, um, really keen to see the fish passage and the, and the restoration issues progressed in that area. Um, they're keen to meet with us as well. So yeah. um, we haven't got a date for that yet. But yeah, look, I think that's um, would it would you be like, fair to the residents like, before we talk yeah. to everybody else. Would you like me to um, share their contact details with you? Because I, yeah. they are neighbours essentially. So I live just around the corner and I am in their closed group. So I am aware of the corridor and the different agencies because they've been working with lots of different agencies in order to try and, you know, get this resolved um, and would like to be invited to the table <laughs> um, because they do have insight. They've lived there for a long time and so that they yes. can... They can um, but I've got their contact details. So if you would like me to share them with you, um, then I am more than happy to do so. Yes, thanks, Holly. And I'd be happy to receive that. And, and maybe we can, you know, um, perhaps organise a small street meeting in one of their homes or something like that. And I'd be happy to... to um, yeah, I think that would be really well received, actually. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that would be great. I'll, I'll action that. I'll send you an email and um, and we'll make that happen. All right. Well, that's, that's fine. I'll just... Um, I'll keep uh, yeah, council officers in the loop as well because I do I understand they're getting some queries on it as well. So um, just make sure that that's all coordinated. Okay. okay. No so is that you can you can keep going? Uh, oh, that's, well, that's, that's, yeah, no, that's that's basically um, that's basically it. I um, I'm just uh, was a little concerned, but we cover this off with the Tilly Road residents as well. That um, the truck movements might be, um, you know, a bit uh, a bit problematic. But look, we'll. It is with the horses, so um, you need to have the inside. Make sure that you've got the contact person who isn't the res who isn't a resident along there. Who these ho they are all horses in that paddock, and they get spooked by trucks. So you'll need to work out some something that happens with the horses, but um, that's outside my brief, but um, that, that will be a key uh, a key piece that needs to happen. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. so at this stage, you just need to lodge the consent, and then I'm sure one of the conditions will be to, um, you know, to, to, to notify um, residents and, and uh, anyone else and, and communicate properly in, in terms of doing the work, so... Um, we will we'll certainly do that once we're 
yeah, close time of, of knowing what the construction program will look like. Yeah. Um, and a question, Darren. So now the slip road, the the road that joins, you know, the 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 local road, as we we're calling it once upon a time, yes. but no, if that's yes. still right the right term, given um that I think it's going to have heavy trucks on it now. Um, where's that at? So yes, we've got a um uh, a program that we're actually just sort of still putting together. We um, we always had, I think we might have discussed this before, we had the sort of stage one to open the road and stage two, you know, once the traffic's on there to finish that intersection and, and that road, um, as well as finishing off, um, you know, there's work around the treatment plant and the streams and the kind of, you know, restoration work that I've just been talking about. So we... We are getting in there, it's probably not until around March next year, um, but basically that road needs to be almost completely rebuilt. So it did get quite um, hammered by our trucks going in and out of there. So it's, um, yeah, it, it, it will be done. At the moment, the cyclists do have dispensation to, to ride on Transmission Gully itself, um, but obviously that is the, the cycle connection is to use that, um, we call it the coast road, I guess, because it's not a local road anymore. Um, so, yeah, we'll just, I guess, have a quite a scaled back team. Um, we're looking to get all of our, you know, various regulatory approvals and things in place and then, um, uh, and then procure that work, probably outsource it and get, get that all finished off. So, um, yeah, there's work around start with 58 and other parts of the project as well, but there's quite a bit to do up at Pakakariki to finish the project. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Right. That comes up to what I think, am I right in remembering when TG had just opened and you said there was a whole stage two yes, um, that's right. work. So that, I mean, it would be quite, maybe you've sent it to me and maybe so, and, and I've missed it, but it might be helpful just moving forward if there was a one pager that said what stage two entail, just not, not for us, but I mean for outward facing, for just to keep the community so that, you know, in the loop. We could post it on a on the website on our Pikeakariki website. People can find it. And they can go. Oh, so stage two involves da 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 da. Just a very clear one pager. Yeah, I, look, that's a good idea. We are getting quite a few inquiries because you know the road is obviously now, and, and now people are sort of looking around and going, "Oh, what's happening there and there?" Yeah. Um, and and with this winter, obviously, it's not been appropriate to do much work. So. Um, yeah, look, I've suggested also that the newsletter that's sort of taken over by the operator now. And I think so I suggested it would be pretty useful for to have to give everybody um, an update through that forum yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah, look, we'll look to um, to get some better information out now that we're starting to understand the the timing a bit more. So um, yeah, we'll try and do that over the next month. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Darren. Any any of my um, all got any questions for Darren? No, thanks, Darren. Okay, no worries. I have got this map up now, but I think you're you're aware of the where I'm talking about with with, with um, Betty Perkins Way. So yes, yes, yes. yeah, cross, yeah, yeah. Across the road from uh, me. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's directly across from Tina. And I was okay. there in that last flood in the absolutely pouring rain with two raincoats on, and my cell phone got ruined. It was <laughs> so heavy trying to find sandbags and getting the and then the fire service were there because it was flooding home. So I was there and directing council staff and trying to meet them oh, and then nobody knew the key was and nobody knew they had the code to the lock and we had to break it and it was the pretty way it was a series of things that should shouldn't have been so hard um because it has been done before so um but uh, getting the um talking to the owner of the who um has the horses and has the lease on that paddock is quite key and so i'll just leave you. yeah Yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So no, the, the there will be a track we'll need to put in, but it will will um, run it beside the rail line, so we can keep you know that grazing area. Um, we'll just have to work that out with some temporary fencing or something. Yep. Um, but yeah, that should, we should be able to work something out there. But yeah, it will be quite a few months of of work with. They'll be the small trucks. Um, it's about all we get in and out there, but um, they'll be going back and forth for for quite a while. But yeah, hopefully, once it's all done. Um, and, and there is also a sort of long-term maintenance there being, you know, picked up by KCDC. It should, um, yeah, it should definitely mm. improve the, the whole area, so. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, and I and I know that many residents will be very, very happy to see that piece of work uh, finally completed, particularly those who um, can't have a shower or flush their toilet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Darren. You can go back to your Tadil class now. I don't like to take you out of your Tadil, so um, thank you. Yeah. No worries. All right. Pleasure. Okay. Okay. Next one. Bye bye. Um. So, and so, hi, I'm Kia ora, Tim. I see that you have joined us. That's nice. Um, and thank you. And you didn't hear what I said earlier, but I was um, just giving you um, some ups um, and saying how um, thrilled I am with the um, current state of the art um, into the seawall. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, um, it's awesome. I'm Thanks. really happy. Um, and I agree, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's. I feel like you've done, um, you're doing a really great job of. It's been such a long project, this project, mm. so it's be quite hard to, to, to adapt and change, but at the same time keep the heart of something. Mm. Um, mm. And um, you've definitely picked that up and carrying it through. So I just, um, yeah, just a nod to you and thank a big mahi. So thank you. Um, oh, cool. oh, can yeah. I just jump in and give a mahi to Natasha, who's here, yes. who's um, who's involved in this too with the furniture yeah. design and yeah, art design. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, thank Great. you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go, Natasha. Yeah. 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 Um, I hopped in one of my students, and he's just fantastic mm. at visualizing and um using gaming products to make it that people can see what it's about so because yeah. no one can read engineering drawings no <laughs> no way no yes it's me. made a huge difference to our um visualization and yeah. and pulling pulling together the design really because mm. that that work is usually incredibly expensive um and this guy's like just brilliant so he's mm. been contributing more than just uh, the mechanics of of pulling together a 3D model. He's really a special guy. So we're right. very lucky. Yeah, yeah. Wow, good work, but, everybody. Nice. Yeah. everybody. If you could pass on our thanks to, to him mm. as well then, like all the sentiments that we're, we're sharing of just how stoked we are with the work that, yeah, you three have done. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, will do. Yeah. Um, and with that, kia ora, Paul, nice to see you. Um, and Paul, you could give us an update on, on all the other aspects of the wall um, and where things are at. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, the, main, the main focus for tonight was actually to have Tim run through some of oh. uh, the, the concept stuff. Oh, um, cool. But it sounds like you guys might have all seen it. <clears throat> we have seen it, but this gets recorded and then it gets put up on the website and we'll share it. So it might mm. be really nice be to, to, to do it and, and we've got it recorded. Um, and then people can 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 look later and also hear the um, Tim talk to it as well, which I think yeah. is important. Yeah. Um, in terms of updates, uh, you, you may or may not have seen. Obviously, we've actually been spending a lot of time um, trying to patch up the existing wall um, as a result of the storms that we've had through, etc. So that's consumed a bit of time along with the other damage that we've had throughout the district. Um, in terms of where we're at, um, there is a hope. Uh, my boss, uh, Disna, is, has got all the tender documents together and she's said that the, the date is the 16th of August. So that's basically a week week from today that it was going to go out on gets. Um, but that's for Access Way 4. Um, but that's with placeholders um, for the artwork side of it. So what what you've seen or what people will see in regards to what Tim's um, sent through yesterday. Um, yeah, that, that stuff will, will, will not be out on the, on the gets um, thing necessarily. Um, it's got placeholders in it for the, for those artwork um, things to go forward. Um, other things of where we're at, obviously there's been a little bit of change in design with the artwork and, and I certainly would like to reflect the comments of everyone else. Um, I think it's, I just think it's cool. Um, I, I really like it. Now, there's a few things that we're still tidying up just with some of those changes. There's a bit of a change to the concrete at the top. Um, Tonkin and Taylor are, are, are looking at getting on to redoing the, the steel work inside that. Um, not a big job, but it's just one of those ones trying to fit into the, into the roster again. 
and also around the maintenance of the, the handrails uh, in terms of around the side there. And obviously with the, the, the changes in regards to uh, the, the symbolic rib cage and the, the heights and the likes, we've just got them to revisit some of the design things, obviously, in terms of from that point of view. Uh, the other interesting part that we've been on um, is in regards to um, taking this through the arts panel, um, the Capital Arts panel, um, which you may or may not be aware. And once again, they've reiterated everybody else's comments again. Um, and there has been some, some comments and discussions regarding the, the sculpture at the top of that. And I don't know if it's probably more appropriate, Tim, if I ask you to, to jump in at this stage uh, and maybe just follow up on that part of the conversation. Sure, sure. I wasn't expecting to uh, speak to the too much. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I can take a minute since like. I've been yeah. put on the spot again. Um, yeah, I just want to give a shout out too to uh, Paul and Elise uh, at Tonkin and Taylor who have been incredibly receptive to us making um, changes to the engineering plans, which um, really the the art working group um, came together and when the design was getting more formulated, it was like to, to fit in, to, to fit things into the design, um, saw it really necessary to move some of the seating and change some um, configurations like of the top plant a box into a diamond shape and and um, what Carl Farrell uh, from Nati Homia had been keen on a representation of the whale as a sculpture at the top and um, we decided to bring it into the center right in the middle there as the best positioning. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, thanks a lot, Paul and Elise, because I, I thought it was going to be, um, I'm sure you've got a lot of other, probably much bigger issues, but that that was has been really appreciated. And um, I think it's really helping to make a strong design um, there. So um, yeah, what, in terms of the sculpture, um, <coughs> so, that representation there, um, that that is a, a simple simple version of the whale uh, jawbone, the sperm whale jawbone, which uh, uh, Carl had expressed his interest in, and we were very keen to get Hemi to specifically design that sculpture. And I know that had been uh, uh, expressed by the community board. Um, to me at the start of this project about uh, the importance uh, and how good it would be to get Hemi involved. Um, and uh, so, yeah, what, what the arts panel, contrary to what I thought, the arts panel said, oh, you should uh, make it bigger. <laughs> more, which even yeah. threw me even more. Was, <laughs> because- uh, It got me worried. <laughs> yeah, and got Paul worried. We did have a conversation with the engineers and because of situating it where that planter box is, basically a great big block of concrete um, and, it, and is actually a more suitable location than say off to the side. Mm -hmm. Cross the road uh, had also been expressed, which is not really suitable. Um, there's toilets there, you know, for, so from a tikanga perspective, it's not desirable at all. So um, anyway, I'm uh, also uh, pursuing, because Hemi can't really do any work on this till later in the year. So we're, as, as Rosie has said, we're in a bit of a chicken and in the egg situation, trying to um, come up with some sort of figures and um, visualizations, but without really, uh, having Hemi being able to do further design work on that till the end of the year. So, so what I am I'm doing is actually talking to some foundries, some of the best ones in the country, um, and some of the best steel fabricators, just trying to sort of sound them out about costings. And really, the costings can be massively 
Uh, I don't really know what the budget could be, what we might be able to get, um, but this is this budget is separate. I just want to reiterate that mm -hmm. from the KCDC budget. So it's we're we're trying to look at, and Rosie's been helping us like look at other ways to get that funding. So that's a separate um, right. funding stream, completely right. different. Just so you're aware of that, but um, it's becoming it's become integrated into that whole um, the whole concept that. Uh, I've, we've talked about in the in the document, and Hemi's um, given a lot of input into formulating that. He's much better about talking to the um, conceptual um, integrity of the project than I am. But I think we both sort of put it in a relatively simple simple way. In, in that document, so so I'm really leaving it to that document to talk to that. Um, but yeah, Carl, I also really want to shout out to Carl, who is we've all been pestering Carl for months. Um, so he's been an absolute key, obviously, and 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 I think he's been enjoying it. But he is under the hammer because everyone's always going to him. But he's been fantastic on this too. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm I'm quite happy to answer questions, but I think if I start rambling on the conceptual background of this, I uh, I would prefer to probably do it in a different um forum than, than your meeting. Yeah. So if I can just jump in if that's okay. Yeah. Um one of the things that we've been trying to work on and explore here is that when the the, the arts panel came back and said, oh, they they might be considering putting some funding in and, and they like the idea of it having a bigger a bigger sculpture and, and, and that sort of thing there. Um, it, it's we've kind of thinking along the lines of that we um, we as in myself on behalf of KCDC that we put in the, the provisions there and we put in the ability for the footings there mm -hmm. and it might be something that comes later mm -hmm. um, and yep. it will be dictated obviously by by funds and it's it's how we actually um, you utilize the funds the best we can within the project and then what the other external fundings may actually come on um, to deliver on it so leaving things um relatively um i mean while this 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 is a great plan in that in terms of the the abilities to be able to change it later if people wanted to isn't going to be a fundamental problem yeah. um, and so that will come down to obviously whether people want to commit money to it how much is going to be committed, how much things are going to cost, and the likes. We thought that the best way of progressing was to was to provide for the ability. Um, mm. And even if we ended up with some placeholders there, mm. uh, for example, flange joints just on the concrete where, you know, just a very simple, um, mm. some very simple timber work mm. could be put in the interim, yep. um, leaving those options open for the future as well. So yeah, that's that's probably I, I think I dropped Tim in a little bit there. I, I I didn't explain where my thinking was with a lot of it, but it was to sort of just convey that message that there are there are going to be future conversations around that, and the fact that everybody seems to be warming to it um, and thinks it's a really good idea. I we wouldn't want to do something that cuts it short prematurely, until all those other options have been explored and uh, the best outcome is is achieved. So yeah. Thanks, Paul. And what's really nice about, you know, that that approach was the original approach back when this started, mm, mm, um, yeah. was to be able to, to put in the into the um, hard construction things that could be added later. So with that mm. long term vision. Um, so it's really, you know, it's just another example of how I can see that certain, not all things, but a lot of a lot of the original vision is being carried forward. And I can I can hear certain people probably scoffing under their breath who aren't here right now. And which is going to bring me to my next question is when it comes to the actual wall <laughs> and the rocks and the actual function of the wall, um, there is still, the, there will be, and there is discontent about the lower walkway area um, and the loss of that. Um, it, is, it does have a huge impact um, on, on accessibility to the beach. It really does. And um, I know that our community will want some, yeah, an update 
on that. So the actual design is set in stone. When and when and how are things being built? Because that's what what, what they want to know. The in terms of access way four, we are basically set in stone now. Excuse the pun. Yep. Um, the um, in terms of the rest of the timber wall, there's still a fair bit of work being done on that, of which there obviously be other access points and the likes. Yep. And then yep. there's also the the conversation about um, on top of that behind the wall as well, in terms of the path, shed path yep. area, and what happens in that space. Um, which yeah. while is obviously different from what was in the, the previous design, um, mm -hmm. you know, you look at places like New Plymouth and, and other ones that, that, that have those coastal walkways and the, the lot, there is, there's a lot of ability to do things even further up, but certainly take the point in regards to um, access to the beach um, and obviously mm. the stipulation in terms of the previous design, what was there as well, but those com conversations are, are to come in, into the future um, when we actually get yeah. the, the rest of the, the timber stuff. Yeah. Okay. And that goes for, oh, everyone's frozen. Is it me? Might be me. You're fine. I can. Okay. I'll, I'll go to everyone just froze all at once then. And so that, that same, that's the same for the planting when it comes to that rock wall. I mean, I, I, had some concern in the last drawing last render that I saw which had the concrete the rocks um concreted in to the wall which then wouldn't allow anything to grow um I understand what why it's there but then I've also noticed that all of the rocks that were concreted in in the other part of the wall that KCDC did some while ago are loose and they fall out and then you got jagged concrete um, and I, it was an alarm bell that went for me. It was like, oh, why is that concrete in it? And it was always supposed to be held by soil and there was going to be plants. And that was one of the reasons of, well, one of the the, the winds of the aesthetic, aesthetic reason of taking them up off the beach was that stuff could grow on them and then they wouldn't creep into the water. Um, so like having an update in, uh, on those kind, those kind of details are really key. Um, and I'm not sure where things are at. Yeah, we haven't haven't got a lot more information in terms of that, other than the the the, the timber pole wall with um, the battered at the top. Now the conversations are around obviously the placing of of boulder material at the top there to use as, mm. as a form of armouring, but again it comes down to the balance between um, cost of maintenance, cost of maintenance versus cost of um, installation expect except etc as the um the the thought process at the moment is and you would have seen during the last storm there there was a series of, of rocks that just rolled down off the what i'd call the secondary or the hind wall um mm -hmm. and we obviously have to come along and, and pick them up and move them and replace them etc um so that's that's where those conversations are at the moment but we don't have any further plans or details through mm -hmm. From Tom yeah. and Taylor, the the as I said earlier, the, the once we receive those, we will be putting them out, obviously, um, for people to see. And also, yeah. I should be noting that um, I'll be getting uh, Tim's stuff that he sent through yesterday up on the website as well, so people will be able right. to be able to right. see that. Yes, I was I was a going little to bit ask of an update. Yeah, whether you wanted that to be public or not, Tim, I wasn't sure, so I didn't share it because I wasn't entirely sure whether whether you wanted that, but. Um, well, I, yeah, because I, <laughs> I, I, I mean that. Uh, I thought that was your call, actually, or your yours and Paul's um, call, because uh, I've just included like budget information, which mm. I, I mean, my view is budget information should be completely public. Yep. Um, yep. That's what you know, and we don't get enough of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, what is going on? So I'm I'm happy for anything, but you know I see that as your sort of prerogative, or the PCB's prerogative, and yeah. uh, KCDC as well. So yeah, Kapai, Kapai. We will discuss that um, amongst ourselves, but I think that that most of us will be in agreement that um, transparency is key, and um, and keeping people informed is key. So um, yeah, but we can. <laughs> 
would like to add on that too, though, in terms of um, it's not a it's not a consultation. Um, no, 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 no. The information going out. It, it's purely just saying that we've had another step here. Here's some yeah. more information. Yeah. Just to keep. No, absolutely, going. absolutely. No, no, no. I wasn't going to go. This is something that that yet yeah, that is being consulted on. No, no. That would just be an um an updated document. Yeah, on our on our community board page. So thanks, but um. Anybody, Tina, have you got anything that you want to ask or? No, I'd just like to reiterate that um, that all the conversations I've seen and heard is um, all around keeping the information flowing. So mm -hmm. keeping it up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd completely agree with that. And yeah, the more kind of transparent and clear we can be from the outset, the kind of more likely we are to avoid anything coming back to bite us to actually under the amazing work that's been done so we might as well just tell the story and it's a pretty good one to tell um, yeah. and there are so many impressive elements to it and yeah Paul just want to thank you for your mahi as well and keeping this going and then sticking with it and yeah just continuing to be really accessible to us as a board so yeah we'd like to send our thanks to you as well. Total cool, total cool that and also um, mahi to you Rosie um, for standing alongside this project um, as part of the arts panel um, it's your second project in Paikakariki in as many, what, six months or something. So that's really great with our money. Yeah. Two. Yeah, yeah, two money. No, quite a few. Can I just can I just clarify a couple of things? I am not on the art panel. You're not um, on the art panel. No, I am the arts advisor with council. Ah. And um, the art, public art panel is an external panel that actually is a group of experts um, who actually um, both give um, very expert advice on art projects and also have the um, delegation to commission artworks. And the um, when Tim mentioned the funding for this, uh, for the HEMI, the proposed HEMI sculpture, that is um, being talked about as coming out of a separate budget, but it's, it's still council, still council funding. Yeah. Um, there is the opp opportunity with all of these kinds of things to approach other areas for funding as well, um, which is something that may may happen in future. But um, the art panel will be looking at this beautiful document um, on Friday and having the opportunity to pass their final comments. Um, but the the sign off in this case is with is with Paul. Um, for obvious reasons, but as far as the sculpture is concerned, that's another conversation with Hemi directly. Cool. Kapai. Okay. Kapai. Um, Tasha. Hi, uh, thanks. Um, I've just got one thing, and, and it's come up in some of our meetings with Tim, <laughs> that Tim's uh, had us all at, and that's about lighting. Mm. And so, um, you know, most of those great sea seaward side walks have some really top notch lighting. I know it would probably blow our budget out by at least three times. Sorry, Paul. Um, but I, I think at least the sculpture needs something, or the bollards, or they're just, you know, that side of the, um, you know, there's no public lighting, it's on the other side of the road. Um, but yeah, there just needs to be something, and so if something can be embedded, that maybe becomes later. I mean, we've talked about solar; it's all quite, you know, difficult to mm. to work through. Um, yeah. But I would almost say it's for a safety reason. Mm. Yeah. Having said that, there's no lights along any of the other access ways, but there's a few people come a cropper. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That and, is, and, can I can I just jump in and just add to that too? That is that is quite a steep staircase and quite vast. Uh, mm. so it is quite different from other access ways. It's a whole new kettle of fish on the shore there. I have talked to a electrician um, who just vaguely mentioned some tens of thousands of dollars to <laughs> get power from across the other side of the road. That could be but the time to do that, if that was a possibility, is obviously when that whole site gets ripped up. Um, but yeah, I only mentioned in the document that we would like to consider light options. Um, I haven't really pursued it any further. So, yeah. yeah. 
I, I don't have any any great answers for you, Natasha, but I hear what you're saying. And um, but I don't I don't have any solutions or answers. Does does anybody else, does James or anyone have, have a direction that which we could go? It's got to come out of the budget though. I don't is it, it's even if it's well, safety. Uh, hopefully I'm dropping in. Oh, you're dropping out, I think, Paul. Is he there? He's frozen now. Yeah, he's having issues. Yeah, and, and I'm not, yeah, maybe it's something that, mm. like the sculpture, it um, is added to over time. Mm. But as long yeah. as there's a way for the infrastructure to mm. kind of be supported, yeah. yeah. So there are two issues here, and one of them is, is just basic safety, which is um, with Paul. Um, but with in far as, as far as the, if we're talking about the sculpture, we're talking about a longer term um, project and every, anything is po um, possible in terms of what's proposed. And in another area, we've been talking about the, um, and I've forgotten the, the acronym, but the, the, the requirement for safety and lighting and, and visibility, um, which is a, a recognized a recognized standard. And um, and so for future large artworks, we would probably be able to consider that as part of that. But we're talking about future now. We're talking about, you know, over the next year, two years or something. So um, I agree that um, lighting should be considered. Um, as part of that, um, but it's it's Paul's call about the um, the lighting for the safety as for now. Paul, sorry, my internet's been dropping in and out. Um, I was uh, I'm not sure what's been said, but um, as part of the conversation for what happens up behind the wall, these are perfectly valid things that can come into that conversation as well. Um, from, I believe there is a street light, for example, across the road um, from roughly Access Way 4. And, and when you do anything along that frontage there, then there would be a, a, an, an expectation to a certain degree um, that there would be lighting for, and I think I just came back in when Rosie might've been talking about safety and, and things like that. So those sort of things will be having to be looked at. The only thing that I would say is I, I personally uh, would be having a bit of a reluctance to have uh, the lighting extending down, uh, obviously towards the coastal marine area. This would all be stuff sitting further back up on what the shared path would be mm -hmm. uh, at the top uh, and around where that sculpture is and behind. So apologies if somebody else has already been talking to that, but um, yeah, that's, that's where I am at with yeah. that side of it. Oh, thank you, Paul, thanks. Um, any, anybody else got, got anything there to add to the corridor? No. 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 Um, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, um, Natasha and Rosie for your mahi. Thank um, you. Um, and, you know, uh, after my day yesterday, which was a bit of a rough day, it was the best thing to happen in my day, I think. So um, it was really nice to receive that document. And um, and like I, I sent a message to Tim saying it even made me a bit teary because it was been, it's been such a long road to even get to this point. And I know the thing's not built yet and I know things change, but um, it's just nice to, um, you know, to see something, to see, to see a, an image and a rendered image and see something evolve. Um, but but keep its heart. So, yeah, thank you. Well, yeah. It's a really, a really great group of people that we've got together, and that you had also, as a community board, had been talking to for several years. That they sort of all came together. So, it it has a really good buzz to it. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. That's the best outcome. Um. Okay. So, where are we on the agenda? We're up to, so we haven't got anybody else, um, any updates on anything else, have we? We haven't got, have, have we got, got Graham? Graham? Yeah. Have we no, got... we were meant to have Graham, but yeah, I can't see him. So I'm not sure oh. that he's going to make it. Okay, that's fine. Um, and I, on to item number eight on the agenda, which is the confirmation of minutes, which I cannot um, confirm as I was sick last night. Okay. I can um, I can move that they are accurate. 
and confirm them. Yeah. No, I need I to see. Second that. Okay. Yeah, I can second that. Carried. And um, item number nine, which is matters under action. So, James, over to you. Thank you kindly, Madam Chair. Number one, you've just had the update from Paul, and um, I'll, I'll pass that feedback uh, on to his GM because uh, he is doing a great job of pulling pulling all of those strands together together with you guys. So it was lovely to hear that, and I'll pass it on to Sean. Um, number two, Transmission Gully, you've just heard from Darren. I had a, I had a question from Darren, but I'll take it offline. I just want to understand better the extent of the application uh, uh, to GW and whether whether it will um, or should it should but whether it will address the issues you talked about at mm. um, uh, the north end of there's a Tilly road mm. yeah so I'll, yeah. Just, I'll just take that offline with them and just uh, I do, understand I do know that that group have been talking to council and to Greater Wellington Council and so they've been talking to lots of different players trying to 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 understand what's yeah. going on what the remedies yeah. are so yeah. Um, yeah. so look I'll, I'll I'll try and just get a bit more insight into into who needs to do what but I, I do I do feel for for those people it was interesting in um, council meeting I think it was last week or possibly the week before uh, that Rita uh, was talking about the stormwater framework uh, and a passing comment she made is that with all of the rain that we've had um, and and possibly some other, climate related um, impacts, our water table across the district is up half a metre and that it would take six months of no rain for it to potentially, inverted commas, return to normal. Um, and so, so we're finding that as a regulator, we're finding uh, developers that are coming in and wanting to develop here are, are encountering uh, problems in, in Kapiti, uh, both with the, the makeup of the soil and the sand, but also very, very high water tables. Um, uh, so this this won't be helping the situation uh, down in Pakakariki either. So, but look, I'll try and, I'll try and uh, just get a, a bit more clarity in terms of what Darren's doing and possibly what Paul and the KCDC stormwater team are doing as well. Thanks. Good. Uh, revocation, yeah. Uh, look, revocation still um, uh, not not imminent. Um, I, I understand it, it could be. The advice I've had is it could be years away yet, um, or or eighteen months to two years. Uh, so we'll we'll keep monitoring that and update that and give the new board uh, plenty of heads up in terms of um, being able to access any opportunities that come with revocation. Ian's coffee site. You've got an update there from um, our property team. A highly technical. I don't know the difference between an AP AP forty and an AP twenty presume one is fine other than the other but they're obviously doing uh, what work they can to mitigate the risk on that site after demolition and the asbestos that was in there um why do we project i'm not sure if uh, tina has anything else to update I, we i yeah, think we not, have an extensive i haven't got anything away. to update on that um but i do you know it does um join nicely with this idea of um you know the swamp land that's running alongside the um um, Wainui stream mm. so it'll be great to see that all planted out as part of the Wainui Whenua project but in terms of giving you an update um, I'm sorry I can't do that cool thank you thank you um, uh, proposed way station you, you heard from Graham um, uh, uh, six weeks ago now it, it does does seem like only a yesterday. Ago. <laughs> a blink ago. I yeah. know, doesn't it? Just so uh, look, I, I I know he was keen to come back and give a, um, a, a a bit of an update on that. I'm not sure what the content of that was, um, uh, and there were questions of him at the time. The last update around, um, uh, I think the link road and those sorts of things. Um, uh, and I'm not sure whether Darren was able to answer any of those that uh, we took the opportunity when he was with us earlier. So, um, is there value in, in getting Graham to come back? Um, I think if, if he wants to come back and he just wasn't able to yeah. make tonight, 
for whatever reason, then he is more than welcome to come back at our next meeting. Um, yep. You know what would be, I, I wasn't at last uh, our meeting six weeks ago, so I didn't hear the update, but um, you know, a timeline or some, some sort of hard details as well as a, a verbal update. But if he wants to come and, and, and give us an update, then he's most welcome. Yeah, look, we'll, we'll, we'll put that to him, whether he just produces a one pager, um, yeah. you know, next step sort of thing, or um, uh, we leave this on here and he can he can come back um, his his choice. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, renaming goes with uh, number seven goes with, I think, revocation um, uh, and uh, number eight uh, cycle sign. I think uh, Sophie was talking, Councillor Hanford was talking about um some work janice is doing and whether this will pick up and address that um uh with that wider cycle walkways and bridle ways work that janice is doing um i'm yes. not sure if so yeah. she yeah, it will thanks sophie and thanks. she will be here at our next meeting yeah because yeah and and i i don't have an update um on on the parking space other than Oh, actually, transmission gully is kind of completed. So whether we need to revisit that um, or do that as part of Janice's work, um, it might might be a convenient tie in there. Mm -hmm. I'm in your hands. What do you think, Sophie? This is the area across the across the road, eh? Are you referring mm. to? This is Jace, um. This is. The Gold. removal of one parking space in the village replacement with bike racks. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I was just, just confused as to whether it was the, yeah, what was happening to the demolished old old CP. Okay, that's that's cool. I think there's still quite a bit of appetite for something to happen and for there to be greater cycle parking. We know, too, that um, Todd, who has who's now the owner of the Holtons building is looking at getting some cycle parking around the back. And he said that that would be, you know, safe and secure and provision of cameras and that kind of thing. So that if anything was to happen or something was to be stolen, one of these flash electric bikes, they'd be able to they'd have footage of that. But I still think from kind of a pedestrianization of the village perspective and wanting to have some real visible signs of us being obviously really accepting and encouraging of people cycling to the village, I feel like there's a real benefit to that being visible. And so I'm still keen if we possibly can. And I know that Mark was kind of working, mm. Mark Martin, I think, was working in and That's around right. some potential solutions, but there were some things that he had to check around legality of, for example, the area that's just in front of Holton's outside the old garage, whether those mm. dotted lines could be removed as that's no longer needed as like an entryway and exit from the garage could be removed to then create another car park, but also use the extra space that will be left over from that closest to the perching parrot to put some cycle parking. So I'm yet to hear back from him as to whether whether that's actually possible under you know the the yeah the law frameworks and we'll, the, the voting yeah. kind of rules. Yeah. Um, look, but yeah. Thank, thanks Sophie. Well look I'll I'll we'll follow up with Mark and Glenn and, and actually make sure that uh, Janice has looked into that wider work that she's doing because it seems to me there's yeah, some there's cool. some synergy. There's there's two aspects. So we'll follow that yeah. up and make sure we get an update. Awesome. Um, yeah, because I did mention it beforehand. to Janice as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing that would be handy to hear is um, with a. Are you <laughs> an exciting I haven't a <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing so you're doing really well, Sophie. I, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll just I'll just keep a composed face. <laughs> um the yeah, the question too was around budget, like whether because it's not gonna take that much budget to just draw a line halfway mm. between and use potentially some of that as cycle parking. And I know what that was one of the concerns was that there wouldn't be budget to do something quite big or something that required a lot of you know infrastructure but surely just like putting a few planter boxes and a line that would divide that area into two that wouldn't cost too much money but yeah keen to give an update i'm going to mm. mute myself now <laughs> okay great thank you that's um that brings matters under action to a close and it also brings our 
community board meeting to a close. Hey, Tina, can I put you in a hot seat and ask you to do a closing karakia, please? Since since poor old Sophie's on it, already got, there's lots of waiata happening in the background. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, Give and me I one would, second. Yeah, sure. Um, and um, and I know I'm just saying this for the benefit of those who joined us late. Um, he's looking at you, Tim, and he's looking at you, Natasha. Our yeah. nomination do close on Friday for the community board, 12 o'clock, and I do have nomination forms. Um, if you would like to speak further, you'll be uffied and supported by us, just so you know. You wouldn't be left in the hot seat doing it all like I would totally um, be a, a sounding board if you'd like, if you wanted it, needed it. But if you are remotely interested, um, send me a message after this meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Yeah. Um, thanks, <laughs> Please. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Holly. I've got um, quite a lot on with what I'm doing with Tim and my job and research and also the surf club. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But I don't I don't mind helping out in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Back of house. Right. Okay. Um all right. Uh mutu amato mahi. Mō tēnei wā, manākitia mai mātou katoa, o mātou hoa, o mātou whānau, aio ki te aurangi. Āmini. Āmini. Tōra. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you for your mahi. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs>